Assalamualaikum and have a good day everyone. So today we are going to continue new chapter in human health. Alright, so there are a few parts that we are going to discuss today. The first part is about what are the differences between infectious and non-infectious diseases. And the second part we are going to discuss about how do the infectious diseases spread and how are the microorganisms that enter the body will be killed. Okay, so without further delay, let me discuss the first part. The diseases can be classified into two types, which is the first one is infectious and they berjangkit, and the second one is non-infectious and tidak boleh berjangkit. And the ways of transmission under the infectious diseases have four ways. The first one is water, air, contact, and vectors. After that, we are going to discuss about the types of immunity in the immune system. The immunity in human system divided into two types. The first one is passive and followed by the active. For both passive and active, they are terbahagi pula kepada dua, iaitu setiap satu passive and active divided into natural and artificial immunity. Okay, so without further delay, let me continue. A disease is an abnormal, tidak normalan, uh, conditions of body or mind that will cause the discomfort. And then it will cause the difficulty to function or the stress to an individual. So ini adalah kita boleh katakan sebagai satu penyakit. And without further delay, let me discuss about the diseases that can be classified into the first one, infectious diseases, and the second one, non-infectious. So what are the differences between these two types of diseases? Infectious disease is caused by the infection of pathogen directly through a medium such as the water or air and vectors. A disease that can be transmitted from one individual to another individual. Here are the examples for the infectious diseases. Consists of leptospirosis, dengue fever, malaria fever, tinea, zika fever, ringworm, flu and tuberculosis. Now, let me discuss about the non-infectious disease. It is caused by the genetic factors or lifestyle. And this disease cannot be transmitted from one individual to another. Here are the examples for the non-infectious diseases. It consists of the hypertension or diabetes, asthma, and also the cancer. Now we are going to discuss about the second part. How do the infection diseases spread? Infectious diseases are spread by pathogen. Pathogen is the organism that causes the diseases. All virus, some bacteria, protozoa, fungi, and also we have to alert in our surrounding. Okay, take a look how the infectious diseases spread. The infectious diseases are spread by pathogen that transmitted from an infected person or we call host. Yeah? And the infection occurs through the vectors such as medium, water, air and contact. After a person uh, gets infected, so the host will show the certain symptoms of the disease and the host is a victim who is weak and easily infected. So, now, let me discuss about the ways of transmission of the diseases. The first one, we are going to discuss about the airborne disease. Airborne disease ini maksudnya penyakit yang dibawa oleh udara. So, there are two types of airborne diseases. It can be transmitted through the droplet transmissions and also dust transmission. For the droplet transmission, yeah, dalam bentuk a droplet, it is an eye. The pathogen containing the droplet spray from the mouth and nose and the infected person through the sneezing, yawning, coughing, talking and breathing. Ring one for the dust transmission, the bacteria in the spit, which is in the saliva of an infected person. Yeah, it will dry up and then will form spores which are spread together with the dust in the air. Ini adalah kepada mereka yang suka ludah tu. So, dalam ludah mereka dan air-air itu ada 
uh, bacteria, other, other pathogen. So, this pathogen will dry up, akan kering dan seterusnya akan membentuk spor di mana dia akan berhebat melalui udara. So, the airborne diseases can be prevented by practicing the following ways. Cover the mouth and nose when sneezing, coughing and yawning. Do not spit everywhere. Avoid being in a crowded place and also ensure the living place rumah kita got uh, enough sunlight eh, which is because because the UV ray can kill the uh, microorganism. Okay, so that we took a look at the examples of the diseases that can be spread through the air. For example, the chicken pox, we have the SARS, eh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, and then we have the tuberculosis. Glucosis ni dia boleh terkenali sebagai TB ataupun penyakit batu kering And then we got the influenza type A, H1N1, the virus And also flu Okay, so without further delay, let's we continue to the second ways of transmission Which occur through the waterborne diseases The infection through the water usually happened in the area with the inadequate water supply, kalau air yang tidak mencukupi, and poor sanitation, and also during flood, this is the causes of the infection through the water. So, what we have to do is avoid drinking or use the contaminated water because a person can be infected by the pathogen when he drinks the contaminated water iaitu air yang telah dicemari Here are the steps to prevent waterborne diseases The first one, we have to add uh, chlorine into the swimming pool and the water supply system yeah, Ini berlaku dalam sistem uh, pengairan ataupun perawatan air di Malaysia And then we have to build the toilet with a good sanitation And then the, we have to boil the drinking water properly and also we have to wash our hands by using soap after using the toilet and here are the infectious diseases that uh, can be spread through the water amoebic dysentery cholera atau dalam bahasa Melayu kita panggil sebagai takun and typhoid Typhoid ni adalah penyakit demam kepialu. The third one is about the infection through the contact. Diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea also can spread through the sexual intercourse. The pathogen of these diseases are present in the body, such as the semen and vaginal fluid. The HIV virus that causes AIDS also can transmit it through the sexual intercourse, blood as well as exposure to the shrink sharing among the patient. Itu perkongsian uh, jarum suntikan di antara penyakit sakit dan juga penyakit dada. This is the example for the tinea, the interpanel, or the ringworm. Kurap dalam masa Melayu kita ya, iaitu disebabkan oleh jahitan fungus. Last but not least is about the infection diseases through the vectors. What is vectors? It is an animal that transmits this pathogen and some pathogens are transmitted from one host to another new host through the animals. We are going to discuss about the disease, the symptom, pathogen, vectors and ways of infection. The first one is about malaria. The symptom is shivering, bermenggigil, fever and sweating. The pathogen name is the Plasmodium malariae. The vector is the female Anopheles mosquito. Maksudnya, uh, Anopheles mosquito, nyamuk betina ini yang akan membawa pathogen tersebut. So, the risk of infection is mosquito bites. Next one is the cholera. The symptom is diarrhea and vomiting, cerit bibit dan juga muntah. The pathogen name is the Vavrio cholerae bacteria. The factor is fly and the risk of the infection is the contaminated food and water. Dengue fever, the symptom is the jointing 
and then you have a fever, headache, and watery eyes. The pathogen is virus. The factors is the Aedes mosquito. The risk of infection is mosquito bite. Zika fever. The symptom is the rashes, jointing, and conjunctivitis. The pathogen is a virus. The factors is the Aedes mosquito, and the risk of the infection is the also the mosquito bite. Typhoid fever, the symptom have the intestinal bleeding and red rashes. The pathogen name is Salmonella typhi bacteria. The factor is the cockroach and fly. The ways of the infection also contaminated food and water. Leptospirosis fever, the symptom is headache and muscle pain. The name of the pathogen is Leptospira species bacteria. The vector is red and the ways of infection is the contaminated soil, food and water. In details, we are going to discuss how do the vectors spread the diseases. The mosquitoes and flies are the two vectors that spread numerous infectious diseases. A mosquito that have already the pathogen in the salivary gland will suck the uninfected person. And the mosquito will secrete the saliva when sucking the blood to prevent the blood flow feed in the lakan daripada darah itu beku and the infection spread throughout the body of the person. And then after another mosquito come and bite the infected person and then transmit the disease to the other victim. For flies, the flies that land on the dirt atas benda-benda yang kotor has pathogen on its leg and body. And the fly will transmit the pathogen to the food and the pathogen will enter the body of a person when he eats the contaminated food. That's why we have to cover our foods. Eh? Don't leave it just like that only. Okay, here are the mechanisms to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. There are three stages of prevention of the infectious disease. The first one is the primary stage. Jadi yang paling asas kita kena improve kita punya tahap kesihatan by improving the personal and family hygiene, kebersihan keluarga, cleanliness of the living places and sanitation system. Kemudian kita kena kuatkan body defense sistem pertahanan badan kita by getting the vaccine and immunization. Dapatkan vaksin dan juga uh, perlindungan imunisasi for the babies, children, pregnant women, food premises operators eh, and many more. And then we have to undergo the frequent health checkup and also maintaining a living uh, lifestyle yang bagus such as inhaling clean air and eating a balanced diet. Secondary stage, which is we have to determine the transmission of infection through the active and passive case detection. Eh? Kita kena pasti sekiranya ada berlaku jangkitan active dan passive and giving the early, early treatment to the patient and separate the patients from others. This is the quarantine style. Okay, but last but not least, it's about the tertiary stage, about to control infected population and protection host. So we have to control the number of vector population by destroying the vector breeding and hiding space, hogging, uh, this one also to membunuh nyamuk lah, seperti biasa ni kita guna. And so enforcing laws, ya, eh, itu kita kenakan kompang kepada uh, rumah ataupun kedai yang kotor dan sebagainya. And then we have to use the protecting hose, such as the mosquito net, and also very thick clothes. With that, thank you very much and have a nice day.